Shut up and sit down. Welcome to the Big Blue Offensive Podcast with Mike Trainer, Jay Jules, and John Depot. Hey, what's up, Giants fam? Welcome to the BBO NYG podcast. I am Mike. That is John. And lo and behold, we found Jules. We we work. We Welcome found him back. Put the info on the milk carton. We found him. I don't know where he's been. He's been in, uh, I don't know, rehab or hiding out or he won the lottery and just skipped this town or whatever. Rehab. And now he's back. I don't I know. On, what I was on the lamb. I was on the lamb for a couple of weeks. <laughs> he was on a binge and shit, but... um. Shout out to Jules. Jules is back. But I just want to shout out myself real quick. I guess because I, you know, fantasy football is over. This the regular season's over. And I'm in three fantasy leagues. And I'm in first place in every single one of them. I'm the points Whoa. leader in every single one of them. So I just want to toot my own horn right there, man. Learn, learn from the fantasy football genius, fellas. That's all I'm saying. You want information? Wait, wait, wait. wait. Is, is, that, is, is that a fact that you were number one and with the most points in, in, in the league that you and I are in? Is yeah, every, yeah, every one of them, every fucking one. You, the one of Hollywood, I'm in. The one with G, I'm in. Yeah, it's crazy. I like, I had a good year, man. In all that fucking fantasy. I, I think, I think my brother felt that he was number one in that league for the longest, but he for he whatever was. reason he got sick this weekend and just fell asleep at the wheel with everything. We also went another league, went from the number one seed to the number four seed just Oof. this weekend. Oh, yeah, that's fucking brutal. Yeah, that's and, a, and in all the in all the leagues I'm in, and I and I literally chalked this up as being a disastrous fantasy season. And was like, <laughs> fuck this, fuck You're fantasy. Opposite. I don't want to do this shit ever again. <laughs> right? Literally disasters. Like I quit putting lineups in in certain leagues, which I never do. I just kept forgetting and shit. <laughs> and and guess what? I'm in the three playoffs. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Fuck and, and the one that like literally we went from one to four. I'm the number three seed going into this other one. Wow. <laughs> That's fucking, that's wild. Yeah, bro. So you want to talk about how crazy fantasy fucking is. It's they, stupid. They, it's stupid. It's any stop, fucking week. You're like, stop, I, you know, I, I'm on vacation this week in all my leagues. Obviously, I get the bye week, but who knows? I'll probably, everybody could shit the bed in two weeks and I'm fucking out. You know what I mean? I That's why I hate fantasy. It's so it's fucking stupid. It's so but, sporadic. All of a sudden, like, like, you know, you, you see like a guy like, um, you know, like, like it's a backup, right? Like that dude McKnight that doesn't, like, he got caught by the Jets. But he had that one fantasy week when he got you like 23 points going down the stretch to get into the playoffs. It's fucking right. ridiculous. DJ Shark, I think, went off for like 22 this past weekend. Good luck playing DJ Shark this weekend. Let's see what yeah, he does. Right. You know what I mean? I know. People just fucking luck out. But we didn't have any luck uh, this past weekend. Um, I Listen, I, I'm going to let you guys have discuss the recap of the Eagles Giants. I will only say one thing, and then I'm just done. I'll probably leave the room. We're not going to do anything if we have no offensive line. I really thought they fixed the offensive line. I was hoping they did, but the way they played this past week, it was just fucking disgusting, horrible. I understand, you know, we had a couple of injuries there with a Isuzu and, you know, Shane Lemieux didn't even fucking really make an impact this year. Um, yeah, so it was uh, it was pretty, pretty fucking bad, but the whole team – was pretty fucking awful, but that really that offensive line really fucking stood out. But although other than that, I'm fucking done, man. This whole season, I mean, we got off to a really hot start, obviously, and from the beginning of the season, we were, you know, in playoff contention. Essentially, it was it wasn't like the last you know six of the last seven years where by Halloween the season was already over. We were fucking one and six or some shit like that. That wasn't the case. But at no point did I think that. This it was important to compete for the division to beat the Eagles. Um, so and I still maintain that, like it, it you know, you want you got to get two more wins this season. There's what five games left, four games left, but you got to win two of them. Um, it would have been nice, obviously, to beat Philly, especially fucking home. Uh, it would have been nice to have a competitive game. Um, but to get manhandled like that when you have the entire fucking crowd going crazy, chanting fucking Eagles and all this shit, like it's just like. It just burns a little more. It's like, why, why can't you guys just fucking step up when it fucking counts? Like, I don't know. It doesn't really mean anything in the grand scheme of the season, but it's just, I don't know. It's just fucking just annoying. I just can't lose to fucking beat teams like this. 40 fucking eight to seven or whatever fucking we lost. Like, come on. Well, listen, it, <laughs> you know, I, I know you guys are sitting at home. It was, it was kind of horrible weather. It was fucking like rainy and cold. Imagine being there. 
<laughs> were you there? <laughs> like, yo, like, I had were you there? Time. Huh? Were you there? Yeah, I was there. Oh, I thought I was you were there. joking. I was fucking there, bro. And, and let me tell you something. That, the, the crowd was into it. But when they went for it on fourth and seven, driving inside on our territory, and, not, and barely our territory, and that pass to Devonta Smith, I honestly thought it got broken up for a split second. It happened so quick. How it just literally went right between the two defenders and he caught it. Yeah. That was the, the straw that broke the camel's back because the team just never recovered after that. Just never recovered after that. And then that stupid fucking punt thing that we got called on an illegal kick. The dude fucking the ball slipped out of his hands and he just kicked it. He's supposed to pick it back up and kick it again. Like it made no sense. Mm -hmm. there, the, that, once those two things had happened, you just knew the momentum, the, the whole atmosphere, everything just changed. There was Philly fans everywhere. You, I was just waiting for fights. To be fucking honest, I was one of the first times I've ever left my home team game and went and left early. I left early. I said, fuck it. It's freezing. I'm going to go. I'm going to go to one of the balls, uh, you know, in the mall. And I'm getting the fuck out of here because, yo, I'm not dealing with this. I'm going to end up getting into a fight. There's going to be mad fights later. You could just feel the crowd getting that way. The Philly fans just were like walking around the stadium like they owned it. Bro, it was bad. Like, you know, so like, like I just need to put that part out there. It was bad because I think the Eagles actually went into this game to just kind of like show us that we're not a playoff team. And they just went in purposely to embarrass us, which is the fucked up part of it. Because here's a brighter note, right, guys? We're at seven wins right now, okay, with the tie, right? So when we were in the beginning of the season, preseason, and talking and making all our predictions, we were supposed to be between seven and nine wins. We are exactly where we're supposed to be, between seven and nine wins. Yes, we got our hopes up. Yes, the second half of the season didn't look nearly as impressive as the first. But at the end of the day, if the Giants can pull out a win against Washington this Sunday, maybe beat fucking the Colts, and who knows? Maybe we get lucky in Minnesota. Maybe we get a fucking early Christmas gift on Christmas Eve, and we pull out three wins, right? All of a sudden, everybody's going to be talking about the playoffs. going to be all hyped up. Let's not forget that the Eagles lit us up without fucking, without, without um, McKinney out there, without a Dory Jackson out there, without Dex, you know, like there was just so many people missing on the same time. And I don't want to make excuses, but look, listen, that's supposed to be one of the best teams in the NFC right now, currently favored to win the Super Bowl. Like, dude, what do you expect? You know what I'm trying to say? Like, yeah, we, yeah. it sucks. It, it sucks that they put the pedal to the metal and they just wanted to show us up. But at the end of the day, we win one or two more games. We cover what the spread was in Vegas. We still might make the playoffs. And fuck it. Let's see. Because, yo, Seattle's got to play San Fran this week. We can take care of Washington. All right? And, and we can kind of still control our own destiny. So, like, yeah, yeah it's embarrassing. It, it, it's kind of cool to get to the playoffs. But, like, let's not expect much. Nobody was thinking we were winning the Super Bowl this year. So, yes, at the end of the day, being there and seeing the way that these fans came in, it's something to sort of just kind of hold on to. And remember, because when we do get a little bit better – Payback's a bitch. <laughs> well, at least the end of the year, the Eagles like might not have to play for anything. But then again, even their backups are good. But you're right, Jules. Like, you know, we were without our three best defensive players in McKinney, Adoree, and Leonard Williams. I'm mean, like, how do you, you know, that's kind of rough. And then obviously our injuries, depleted injuries on our, you know, not just offensive line, but our wide receivers, obviously. I'm like, we're really just outmatched from the from the get-go. You know what I mean? So yeah, I mean, listen, I'm looking forward to Sunday night. I'm going to be hyped up again. I can't wait, uh, you know, but Washington defense, that front is no joke either, <laughs> you know, so we got to watch one, out for one, that. One more thing I just had to add because I'm just curious and I wanted to kind of ask you guys. Do you ever remember the fan base for the fucking Eagles going, E-A-T-L-E-S, yeah. Eagles, Eagles? I'm like, bro, it's like that. so many fucking letters. It's annoying. Them. Like, every time you saw spelling it, you're like lost. Like, what are they doing right now? What, who's E? Is that should have peed on it. Yeah, it was horrible. They were even doing that shit in the bar, bro. It, it got like that bad, dude. We're like, they just came in and took over. Fuck them. Not you know, I, I really, like, yeah. I don't know who's going to do it, but like, it's in a sick, twisted way. I'm almost fucking rooting for the Cowboys. <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't know what to do. Like, well, because someone's going to have to knock them off their fucking throne, right? In two weeks and like put a little reality check back into them. It's not going to be fucking this week when they go to fucking, who they playing this week? I even fucking remember. But I know they got like a fucking cakewalk this week. Oh, the Bears. They're going to fucking oh, go to Chicago yeah. and smack them around. So yeah. like, yo, that is the Cowboys. Like, I almost want to see the Cowboys beat them. You know what I mean? Like, fuck you guys. But whatever. Mm -hmm. We'll get there when we get there. 
We just gotta make the playoffs, man. No one's gonna care about the the one off games if we're we're in the playoffs. You know, when you get to the playoffs, that fucking week going into it, you know, you'll get all these fucking videos and recollections of 2007, 2014, uh, 2012, uh, you know, 2007, 2011, what like the, the Super Bowls. It, it'll be exciting. It'll get the fans rejuvenated. Even if they don't win the fucking playoff game, it's still an appearance. It's still getting these young guys fucking experience. Um, it, it's it, it still it still means something. So. I don't, you know, this game was mad annoying to watch, but at the end of the day, it's it's really a, a, a filler chapter and a very pivotal season in this franchise's history because we still don't know what's going to happen with Daniel Jones and Saquon and this guy and that guy for for the off season. And you'd like to think a playoff appearance, especially if they could finish out the season, you know, maybe two and two, three and one, figure out a way to put together, uh, you know, a, a solid you know, last quarter of the season, last four games of the season, it'll give everybody a better taste in their mouth than we've had the last like month, month and a half where we haven't won a game in like fucking six weeks or shit like that now. Well, I think that's a wrap with the fucking recap of that garbage. I don't want to talk about it anymore. Um, because I, 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 I even got, I was like, I was in a, such a bad mood that even Monday when I went to work, I fucking got like into like road rage with a bus driver. Like it was fucking crazy. The bus driver just stopped like in the middle of the road when I was trying to make a left. And he stopped there in the middle of the road just to beep at me. Meanwhile, I know what I'm doing. It was just a fucking bad situation. Like with the whole Eagles hangover, I fucking, you know, threw up the middle finger. The poor fucking 20 kids were horrified on the bus. <laughs> it was fucking, it was a disaster on Monday. It was a school so, bus. Yeah, it was a school bus, man. So uh, I, I pictured a city bus. I don't, I, I hope it wasn't a special ed bus either. That'd be even more embarrassing. But anyway, was it short or long, <laughs> you know, it was definitely a short bus. Well, anyway, <laughs> it, was I just, short and it was green and white. <laughs> yeah, it was definitely green. But uh, green wanna, white. what does that mean? Want to make you it like the Eagles? Eagles. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I mean, <laughs> yeah. The kids were in there going E A G. Yeah. Except they spelled it wrong. Yeah, yeah, they spelled it wrong. I just, I just want to make a, a quick shout out to uh, one of the guys that hit up the BBO MYG podcast Twitter uh, was Dominic and Sue. Uh, you know, badass player for for many years on the line. Oh, the the Dominic and Sue. The Dominic and Sue. He was on the. He's Madonna on the. Dama and Sue. The Dominic and Sue. Madonna Sue. John is, but, our, uh, is our official pronunciation type of thing when it comes to the players' names. All right. So come on. Let's yeah. Play I'm Madonna I mean, Sue. I mean, like, I think I had a better pronunciation than Jules has had in the past. But oh my God. Jules butchers names I, on purpose. I, I, I know he does. <laughs> uh, but shout out, shout out to him. Uh, I pretty much, he says, like, he said his tweet was sometimes Giants are smaller than you think. So I just wrote you with dot, dot, dot and had a picture of, uh, you know, clown mask with uh, Mr. Rogers on, and then he shouted out, that man is a legend. So he played it pretty cool. Uh, shout out to him. I mean, don't want to mess with him if I see him in the fucking block, that's for sure. Yeah, <laughs> and, you know, like, and, and he's with Philly, so, like, they're only an hour and a half away. So yeah, right. There. Yeah, he could drive to the BBL NYG podcast houses, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but uh, anyway, moving on to the preview of the Washington game. Um what happens, guys, if it ends up in another tie? Can you fucking imagine if it ends up in another tie this weekend? Bro, listen, hold on, hold on. I would think that whoever has the ball last would just be like, just the defense would just walk off the field and the guy, guy, just fucking score. Just score because <laughs> we're not going to fucking like, do this again, all right? Like, there's no way we're going to kill it. Like, because think about this, right? At least we got to wash that tie with an embarrassing loss in Philly, right? We're with Philly, right? Yeah. And like, you know, like, that's it. Like, we're, we're like long forgotten about the fucking tie because literally now we got our asses handed us by fucking Philly. Washington's been sitting on this shit for a whole week. They've had the bye week. They saw Philly, who they actually have given them their only loss of the season. And they're like, yo, we tied these motherfuckers. So like, and then they, they, they got that shit more on our head. To us, it's just like, oh, well, we're playing fucking Washington this week. Let's go. Like, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? So, I, you know, I, I think going in, it's like it's us it means nothing i think it's a hell of a lot more to washington that they would be fucking like i don't know i, I think they would just fucking retire for the rest of the season the time again mm. <laughs> <laughs> what i like about this game is the fact that washington is coming off of a bye week um we had a game that where we got fucking pride hurt and that should give the guys a fucking extra little bit of fire in the practice this week especially that we tied washington the week before so I like the fact that they're going to, you know, Washington 
statistically speaking, at least, most of the times when teams come off of bye weeks, they're usually a little more rusty than people want to admit. Um, so let's let's fucking hope that that's exactly the case. If we come out to fucking seventeen nothing, you know, first quarter lead and ride that through the court through the through the rest of the game somehow. Keep dreaming. Um, but what? Keep dreaming, John. Yeah, I was gonna say it's probably not gonna happen that way. No It'll way. Probably fourteen nothing fucking Washington before you get out of the first quarter, just like one no, last it'd be time, but... it'd be zero zero and shit. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's gonna um, be one of those games. But it's a fucking must win game, and now we're at the point of the season where the play like players who are playing for something need to show up like Daniel Jones has, he's been fucking excellent. I don't care what anybody says. The guy just makes fucking plays whenever, whenever he even has a slight chance of something, he makes shit happen. And fucking, you know, the guys around to need to step up. You got to fucking get your act together and fucking, you know, figure out a way to fucking win this game. Like come hella high water. You got to come out with a W. Let's hope so. Let's hope so. Right. Like, like, uh, you know, like, at this point, the way the season has changed, let's say, it, it, it's kind of hard to just go in and be like, we're going to take this. We got this. Yes. Like, I, I just don't feel that anymore. And look, a lot has to do with injuries. A lot has to. And I, I hate using that as an excuse. It does, though. You're right. But like, when you're not deep in a position and all of a sudden you lose that guy, there is no chance for a next man off. You know, you can't have the Richie James of the world and some of these other guys that we signed off the street, basically, to play wide receiver. Like, you need a guy that's still decent, that's a backup only because the guy in front of him is a superstar or a star. Like, you know, and that's what we're lacking on offense, and it's clear. And look, you know what? We ran Barkley into the ground. He's not 100%. It's clear. They didn't even – he was a game-time decision up until about 10 o'clock, you know, that morning. Yes. So, like, dude, like, you know, that's what happens. You need these extra runners. Matt Breida, you know, he's a – He's a solid veteran backup, but like at the end of the day, that's what happens. You know, you need, you need, you know, these running backs can't go 16 games anymore like that, you know, especially if you're going to try to give them 25 carries a game or 20, 30, 25, 30 touches. So, you know, if that, that, you know, once that went down and you lose Shepard and you lose all these other guys, you trade away Tony Galladay doesn't show up. I mean, what do you expect? You know, like there, there is, there's only so many next men up that can possibly happen. Bro, not for nothing, but it, it went a little bit under the radar when it happened. But that Sterling Shepard injury really, really played a big part in fucking the last you know six weeks of the season. Now he's been hurt for longer than that, but at the time we still had Kenny Galladay, we still had fucking uh, Kadarius Tony when he got Wendell hurt. Wendell Robinson. And, I mean, listen, yeah, yeah. So we had we had some we had some players who you know it, it, what, you didn't feel the blow, but you can't tell me that since Galladay's kind of just completely disappeared for real this season. And Tony literally being gone, uh, you can't tell him fucking what's his face, James, however fucking well he did in the first few games of the season, all that shits fell off. Sterling Shepard had a legit connection with Daniel Jones, and they would they caught, I think I think their completion percentage together was like eight hundred. Um, it was like eight eight something uh, eighty something percent completion percentage uh, between uh, Sterling Shepard and Daniel Jones. Like we could fucking use that shit. Well, he's a he legit route runner. fucking Sterling Shepard, so he's an le- important player for us. He's a legit route runner. I mean, don't, I, you know what I mean? We don't have guys that can run route that crisp. <laughs> we just don't. I, I do like Hodgkins, though. Actually catch the ball, bro. I do like, like Hodgkins. I, th- I mean, we said it last week, John. I like I like him a lot. He's definitely – he shows up every week. I, I think he's definitely uh, – could be part of the future at least, you know. Right. He has yeah, a big if you go to the practice squad, maybe. Well, no, he's not. Yeah. Hoskins, like Hoskins only looks good because, because of all the garbage. Shit. I know. I know. Piece of shit to shit. That better I, look a piece of shit and better, right? That's all we're looking at here. Don't you look better than yourself, you look better than Slayton, Jules. Where was no, Slayton on fucking no, uh, like, on come Sunday? On, Slay, Slayton's going up against one of the best fucking corners in the league in Sly, right? Exactly. So done. He had no shot. He had no shot, bro. Nothing. Like, Zero. He couldn't even get an open for his life, dude. I watched. Yeah. I mean, bro, no that was like the way. easiest fucking day that he ever had over there with Sly. Fuck them, my bro. Like Slay, fuck him. But like, that's the whole point. Like, you know, we just didn't. We don't have a number one receiver. Look, let's just take a look at the Eagles, right? Yes, their offensive line got a little bit healthier, right? Like from last year to this year, right? Oh, yeah. And then they go out and they get AJ Brown, who Wink was comparing to Terrell Owens type of a fucking play. And look, on that one fucking, I forget what kind was like. I guess a corner route they call it. Bro, he was so wide open. It was insane. Like, I saw the play developing, and I'm watching it, and I'm sitting there like, oh, my God, he's going to catch a touchdown. Like, like 
before he even made the break. You know what I'm saying? Because you could just see the way he sunk the whole defense and the whole right corner was wide open. I'm like, wow. But like, that's the difference, right? So Jalen Hurts, now with this better line, and let's give it to him. The one thing I will give it to him, he can scramble, he can run a little bit, right, Jalen Hurts? But now his offensive line's a little bit better. And then you throw a guy that, that, that like all defensive coordinator compared to Terrell Owens out there. You got your healthy running backs, Devontae. Yo, dude, like, what do you expect? Like, like I would love to see a, another quarterback, like maybe someone like, I don't know, maybe even someone like Zach Wilson. Fuck talking about Daniel Jones. But like you throw Zach Wilson in that team. I guarantee you he's got the fucking Eagles at like 10 and fucking three or something. You know what I mean? Like it, it, when you have tremendous talent surrounding you and you're still a NFL caliber player, you're going to fucking perform. And that's what I see happening with the Eagles right now. And they're clicking, they're taking advantage of, of a bad season, you know, uh, excuse me, of a weak schedule this season. And, you know, look, when the playoffs hit, we're going to see. Do I think they could beat San Fran right now? Fuck no. I think San Fran might actually surprise and be the fucking NFC representatives. That's where my pick would be with it, Dad. I'm not even a huge fan, but, like, they just keep fucking winning. They destroyed Brady on Sunday with fucking Purdy as their quarterback. I Purdy's mean, nasty. Dude, like, that, that team is on its way. Yeah, they're they're a fucking good squad. All right, guys, I'm done talking about that too. <laughs> you know, you guys want to take a commercial break, get into like the uh, haters club and the picks. Let's do it. All right, guys, we'll be uh, right back on the Big Blue Offensive Podcast. All right, we are back on the BBO NYG Podcast. I'm Mike. That's Jules. That's John. Uh, guys, haters club. I don't know if you have anybody. Um, I've been doing, you know, handling the Twitter aspect with Chad Powers. Uh, Chad Powers got a bunch of people again. Uh, these people just come out the fucking woodwork. Welcome all you ignorant ass bitches, critics, complainers, disgruntled rappers, <laughs> and racists especially, to the ninth annual international player haters ball. Oh man, hey, 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 <laughs> this guy Rusty Cole at Rusty Cole eleven and NYG seven five and one season over. That's real like ni- nice optimism at Giants twenty two one two. He's been a a haters club guy before. Uh, basically, like Alex Wilson tweeted out something that you know Daniel Jones is is on pace to be sacked fifty two times this year. That's seven more times than his previous high of forty five back in twenty twenty when. He kind of just thought that was a loss here. I don't know how it just keeps getting worse. But then this guy, Giants2212, said, I don't know where these guys, these clowns got this information. Daniel Jones is the fourth in the league in amount of time to throw. <laughs> I'm like, have you, like, where the fuck did this dumbass narrative come out that you actually fucking believe that? So, of course, I had to troll him. I just wrote, you know, I put uh, fake news, little meme with fucking Alec Baldwin and shit on it. And then Rusty Cole got to chime in. He just chimed in six minutes ago, literally. He's like, oh, so you don't watch the games. I got to think of something to go back at this motherfucker right now. These guys are just fucking clueless. Listen, I get these guys want the fucking these these uh, quarterbacks that are coming out in this draft. I see him getting all the fucking hard for these fucking mock drafts that ESPN is putting up. I hope we trade up and get fucking Anthony Richardson. Please, please. I'm like, no, we need, we need O-line, wide receivers, and linebackers. I mean, have you not watched the fucking games, Rusty Cole? So those people are nominated in my fucking haters club. Hate, hate, hate all fucking day, every fucking day. You that's- know what, though? Like, I, I had to agree with you, and I think that's part of the reason why I don't have someone for the haters club. Because those those people right now, where the season's not even over, you're still technically not even close to being eliminated from the playoffs. Yes, you're coming off some embarrassing wins, losses, games, whatever. It doesn't matter. And then they're doing these mock drafts. To like go after like key players like a, a quarterback and it's like it's just plain stupid, dude. Like first of all, you're right. If we have an offensive line problem where literally we have to now go back two years, it's 2020. With to, to give a comparison to as many times as Daniel Jones has been sacked, right? You have Barkley who was running all over the place. All of a sudden, isn't running like he was anymore. The holes aren't there. It's not like Matt Breed is coming in and rushing for 80 yards, right? right. Clearly. We have secondary issues at the cornerback positions. We have issues at the linebacker position. But, yo, you know what? Let's go get a quarterback, bro. We're going to fix everything, man. You want to kill him, too? so stupid, bro. It's so stupid. Another guy, Jules, another guy said he wanted uh, next year, he's like, uh, I want Jacoby Brissett for a year to be the 
bridge quarterback to, to a new quarterback. I'm like, so you want to – Jacoby don't even run. You want to get him killed? Do you want to see him die? <laughs> like, is is that your motive? Then then I agree with you. Otherwise, you're just a big idiot too, man. I, did well, I think I saw, like, I saw it, like, tweeted out today. It was something about the New York Post, basically. I don't know if it was from Monday's article. I forget what it was. I wasn't really yeah. – so you can have the tweets. But uh, literally, it was just basically like, you know, why not give Daniel Jones one more season? But uh, And it's not – a sort of prove it season because he's had those already. Right. But here's a guy that's been in the system. You're comfortable with him. He, he can take care of the football. He knows the team, you know, all this kind of shit. Why not bring him back for one more year? It's not a prove it, but you've got a guy who's there. Let him be the fucking bridge quarterback. Like what difference does it make? No one's saying you go outside Daniel Jones for three, five years, you know, whatever, or 10 and you know, all those crazy contracts and shit like that. But, yo, why you you don't think he would sign for, like, a one-year $25 million or something like that? And, look, I know that's a lot of money. But, like, at the franchise end of the day, him? Yeah. You know, or franchise him, I think that's worth, what, like, about – I think the franchise is worth about 30 if I'm not mistaken. Ooh, that's a lot. Yeah. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. You got to do, like, that's a one-year $25 million contract. You're the guy. Look, if we put pieces in place around you and all of a sudden you win 10, 12, 11 games or something like that, you know, then we'll talk. You know, then we'll talk. We'll see what you do. You know what I mean? But, like – at the end of the day, you want to bring in another bridge quarterback and deal with this shit and then hope that, like, the following year draft is good for quarterbacks. Like, fuck that. Keep the guy you have and just don't make it a long contract. And if Daniel Jones doesn't want to do that and he thinks he could do something better out on the free agent market, then you let him go. And then you bring in the Jacobis or whoever the fuck else is out there to be a quote-unquote bridge quarterback. Mm-hmm. i tell you, there was one more thing, too, John, before you go. Uh, John, go ahead, man, and then I'll get back to it. Because it's kind of serious that I'm going to say in a minute. Well, what I was going to say is pretty, pretty serious, but I can't, I don't see any other way around it. If you look at who is saying this stuff and what quarterbacks they fucking want, the guys who hate Daniel Jones the most are the ones who want the Giants and cry about the Giants not, ha- not ever having a black quarterback. It's what it is. It's racism at its finest. And everybody wants to say racism is white people hating people, but just the same way that fucking people accuse white people of being racist, there's also other races that are other races that are racist, and even more so against white people. And it, it's never more evident than when you have a fucking quarterback who's playing as well as he is, and you have the same group of people always talking shit, always looking for reasons to fucking replace <clears throat> them, with no 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 substantial evidence of any kind whatsoever. Always the same group. Always the same situation. Well, it's actually, it's kind of funny you bring that because that's where I was kind of going with it because all this Daniel Jones shit that's been going on for the past like week. And I've I actually seen what you're saying, like in a fucking tweet, like I couldn't fucking believe it, man. So basically, like, I, I'm not going to say his name, but um, I don't know. It, it was basically like he, he's, he was getting like he said something about Jones being like, he's like, I'm, I'm over Daniel Jones truly. Um, for good or whatever, that was his post. So every, you know, you had the fucking Daniel Jones supporters going after him. You know, like, listen, dude, you do a, <clears throat> you know, YouTube channel, you're gonna get hate just like I do, you know, just like we do running the podcast. We're gonna get hate. So basically, like, he had a bunch of guys saying, you know, you're a fucking moron. I'm tired of morons like you. You're a delusional. You're an embarrassment. If you watch the entire game. And if you think the problem is him, you're stupid. And they were just they, one of them called him a retard. <laughs> I probably got to bleep that out when I get there. Um, but basically, like it was uh, after like he got the Haiti screenshot, he posted and then he pretty much, you know, kind of said insinuating that all the people that were going after him were white Daniel Jones supporters. And I just thought, like, why would you even take it there? Like, we're not even talking about that. I think. I would say like every giant fan would want the quarterback, whoever he is, you know, the color of blue, <laughs> you know what I mean? Just to be the best fucking quarterback in the league. Why would you take it to like a, a racist level like that and insinuate that it's all like white people being Daniel Jones supporters? I've seen plenty of supporters for other side, but you know, you're right. And then I've seen him with his comments about the quarterbacks he like. <laughs> And shit, but I'm not going to get into it. But I just thought, like, why would you bring race into the topic of Daniel Jones? I'm like, what are we doing here, man? Like, sometimes I just feel like, like, I got to delete this fucking app. Like, are people that fucking serious? That's the thing, man. It, it's you, you just see it. Like, it's hard to fucking ignore. 
It's hard to ignore. It's always the same fucking situation. I always say the same exact fucking things. And it's the same people that every chance they have an opportunity to talk about the Giants not having a black starting quarterback, it's the same fucking people. It's just what it is. Same dudes on Facebook, on, on Twitter. Same dudes, same names, same fucking group always. So. Well, yeah, like I said, to me, it doesn't even deserve fucking attention. <laughs> I'll be fucking honest with you. You know what I mean? That's how ridiculous it is. Yeah, it's crazy. Like, who gives a fuck? Just for real. Get guys that are. I mean, just, about sports. I mean, imagine, football. imagine how much of a hater you have to be. Plain and simple. Right, you're, you're a football player. You're not. Like, what the right. fuck? Either you're a really good NFL player, or you're just a bad NFL player who probably would shine anywhere else in any other league. But whatever. It's weird. Like, I grew up as a kid. Like, my favorite player was Lawrence Taylor. You know, I love that fucking guy. And he was a fu- he was the best player in the fucking whole league. You know, of course you want the best players. I don't care what. I don't care where they fucking come from. I don't care what they do. Like, I would have took Deshaun Watson on this team, and that dude just loves happy endings more than I do. So, fuck it. I don't care. <laughs> but anyway. Well, just think how how racist you have to actually be to want your team to fail just so you can get the quarterback that you want in because he looks a little bit more like you. It's definitely weird, and it's a very, very touchy uh, topic. But listen, I've seen it on Twitter too, John. It is what it is. Like these people, it's real. They, just, they like what they like, and shit. You can't like, you know, you, you you try not to judge a book by its cover. You try to judge a book by their attributes, what they do on the field. Are they a winner? Are they a good person? You want good people in the locker room. You want leaders on this team. You know, I think we got a good locker room. We got a lot of talent. And we're going in the right direction. So, listen, if they move on from Jones, if they want to draft a guy and get a guy to be like, you know, to, to groom, to be the next quarterback, and then all of a sudden next year, Danny Jones plays phenomenal, and then we have this rookie that's all of a sudden he's going to be good too, it's a great problem to have. We have two great quarterbacks, no matter what color or where the fuck they came from. It would be great. It would be like Washington when they had RG3 who had that phenomenal year, and they drafted Kirk Cousins too. So they had two good guys, and they end up trading it, got draft capital. So, I mean, that could work in our benefit too. So I just don't want people to think we're such Daniel Jones supporters that we wouldn't just draft a quarterback if he falls in our laps and then we could groom the fucking kid. You just – you never know. Football, especially with injuries, man. People, like, we were worried about Daniel Jones having a, a neck injury that could have cost him his career. So it's always good to have that and go in the right direction. And, listen, I trust these guys. Whatever they do, they do, and we have to trust them until they show us otherwise, you know? I mean, sure, it was a bad signing with Glowinowski and shit because that guy fucking sucks. And then Feliciano, he's kind of garbage too. So, listen, the, the jury's still out in these fucking guys, but we'll see. We'll see how, We'll see when we get there. I definitely – my trust definitely – uh, is still with them, but I I really don't think that they should use some type of high end resource to get another quarterback in here. Not this year. Um, <laughs> he's he's played here. far well enough where uh, you know that if you could just increase the talent level around him, you're going to have a proficient NFL quarterback. Worst case scenario, best case scenario, you have a very 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 good athletic dynamic accurate fast quarterback to lead your offense into the future that's best case scenario worst case scenario is you have you have a good quarterback right so why not use all the resources you can over the next year or two to really build a team around somebody who you know the floor is is at least average nfl quarterback play with dashes of brilliance now listen, that's exactly what I was saying, where, where it doesn't make any sense to go out and spend money on a quarterback to bring him in as a quote-unquote bridge quarterback. Like, if you're going to do that, you keep Daniel Jones. Like, that's it. You know, it's it's no longer, oh, we keep him, you know, we'll give him one more year. It's not even about that. But, you know, like, thinking about a way where the Giants currently sit with four games to go in the season, if they make the playoffs, we're not going to be a top-20 team, right? So you're not going to understand that. So, like, you know, like, if a quarterback then falls to us, then yes, you draft them, but to trade up and do anything silly like that this year, it's it's not the, it's not on the tables. We need we need offensive linemen, we need corners, we need linebackers, we need receivers. Like desperately, you know, we need to get that shit on the on the field first, and then maybe in 2024's draft we can start talking about a quarterback. But 2025, unfortunately, yes, we have to wait until then. 
you know, there's nothing we could do about it. That's what's called being with this rebuild. Unless you get lucky, who knows? Maybe we find one of these quarterbacks late. There's been plenty of them. I mean, Lamar Jackson was the last one in his draft of the first round, you know, in, in that draft. So, like, we'll see. You know what I mean? I, I think it's just way too early to be talking this stupid ass conversation. Yeah, if yeah, we were real. sitting here, if we were sitting here at like maybe like four and whatever, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. This conversation warrants a, a fucking this much time on the podcast. Yeah, it's it's but a waste. There, so fuck right. that shit. Yeah, let's focus waste. on Washington and let's keep right. it moving. Focus on My Washington. Is, though, what has Daniel Jones done to not deserve to be back here? Why does everybody want to rush this kid out of, out of here? Because it's six, like it's like six losing. Said, it's six with a top ten pick. I can understand this discussion. We're sitting with a top 10 guaranteed pick. You know, we've got a losing record. We have no shot at the playoffs. Discussion. Well, That's the record, not the case. Jules, what right. has Daniel Jones done to not deserve to be with this team? It's it's right now it's a matter of contract. That's why I said this is more of a discussion for us when the when, when the offseason hits. Because right now it doesn't right. make sense. Yeah, it just, it just, it's I just know we're, we're seven. Like, for real. You know, Yo, this dude could turn around and win three out of four games and get us to the fucking playoffs. Right. And then all of a sudden, we're playing maybe like a team like Minnesota, where if we would have won three games, we might have beaten them already. You know what I'm that's, trying to say? So like, yo, game on. Let's do this. Yeah, like, that's on. that's why the whole debate that I keep seeing on Twitter is just ridiculous. Why are we talking about this? We're yeah. you're right. We're five and fucking, uh, you know, seven, five and one. You know, we all we all should be rooting for. We get to the fucking playoffs. We got the twentieth pick right now in the fucking. Yo, it, was, it was what just two seasons ago that everybody was fucking going bananas because fucking the Eagles sat their team and we didn't get fucking get playoffs with a losing record. Now we have a legitimate shot with four games to go, and everybody's like, "Hey, we didn't get you in the kid." Oh God! Shut the They're, fuck up! I know. Right? The Eagles might hate right. it. Fuck all you assholes with those stupid ass debates that are going on on Twitter. Hey, if you got something to say, bring that shit because you're fucking retarded. The having it right now. <laughs> It doesn't matter anyway, because Chad Powers is going to be the quarterback of the future. <laughs> All right, we are we are done with that segment now. Um, on to the uh, pick 'em segment. Jules, you've been gone for two weeks. We uh, the Big Blue Offensive Podcast has moved into first place. What? We're, we're at a hundred. Like <laughs> we're at a hundred and thirty-one uh, points. Uh, next guy behind is Mike Birdie. Then it's Rai Rai guy MFT. So we uh we moved on up, man. So now it's the uh it's that pick segment. And we got Shit. we got a lot of games this weekend. Thursday night, we got Saturday games, Thursday, full day. Saturday, yeah, like yo, that's full, Sunday. Full swing is coming week. It's gonna be nice. All right. So first game is Thursday night. Uh 49ers. They are in Seattle. 49ers are just wrecking people with that defense. You can't score on them. They're minus three and a half. I seen on the timeline Brock Purdy was day to day with like ribs. And shit, but maybe they're just kind of protecting him. But I don't care who they got as quarterback; it don't matter. Actually, Brock Purdy is better because he could throw outside the numbers and hit these guys where Garoppolo could never. I love the fucking Forty Niners, man. They're, oh, just, they're nasty. Just a, just a quick fun fact on that: uh, I heard that Purdy's parents had purchased those tickets to that last week's game like about a month in advance because they wanted to see Tom Brady. Yeah, and they got a chance to go into the game that their son was actually starting. Pretty cool story if you buy it, right? But I had to share that one real quick. Yeah, Pretty I mean, awesome. listen, I don't give a fuck if it's in Seattle. Like, listen, Geno Smith, I understand, might win comeback player of the year. We'll get into that later on in the season. But, yeah, no way. I think that they do not cover the three and a half points in Seattle. Fuck that. Like, fuck Seattle. Like, fuck out of here with that one. John, fuck Seattle? Uh, yeah, fuck Seattle. I like that as a money ball pick. Do you guys agree? I agree. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. The, way, the way the foot has been playing, you almost have to. Unless unless Purdy doesn't play and Garoppolo doesn't play, and then all of a sudden they're like using a wide receiver, like Debo Samuel has to play quarterback or something. But they still might win. Well, that's the thing. Uh, Jimmy Garoppolo can't play because he got a broken footy. Otherwise, they got thrown out of a wheelchair. And Debo has a high ankle sprain. He could be out to the playoffs. But I don't care. It don't matter. It don't matter. Ooh, and isn't are... Christian McCaffrey yes. like uh, questionable as well? I did not see that, but okay. – I don't know. Who cares? <laughs> 49ers, man. All 49ers. right. Next game. It's the Saturday games. The one o'clock game on Saturday. Minnesota is home against the Colts. Minnesota is minus four. You got to go Minnesota here. That's too I mean, close. Have, to right? Like, like there's no way that they can fuck that up again at home. And and, and then the Colts are coming in with a three game losing streak. Like you, you got to go fucking Vikings. Yeah. Yeah, right. Yeah, I kind of I kind of agree with that. All right, Minnesota it is. I wouldn't put that as the best bet. I don't know about that game, though. Yeah, yeah, I wouldn't laugh. You know? All right, uh, next uh, Saturday game at 4.30, it's the Browns and the Ravens. Browns are at home. They're minus two and a half. Uh, Ravens, I think they lost their other quarterback, too. Hunley, right, with a concussion? 
Is he out though? That's the key right there. Like that's that's the key. Um, kind of like uh, Ravens are just they they got a good team, man. But they're in Cleveland. That's the only thing. I think that luck runs out. They're Holly's questionable. Just so you know, he's questionable. Yeah, I mean, totally. I mean, I, bro, it's I, amazing I, when you look at other teams' fucking injury reports, and it's like two, three, four players, and ours is like seventeen double digits. <laughs> it's wild. It's bananas. I like the Browns. I'm going with the Browns. Oof. All right, because I haven't been here in two weeks, I'm gonna go. <laughs> All right, Browns. It is right, John. You on Browns or or yeah, Ravens? Browns, Browns. Browns. Okay. All right, next game. Ooh, Bills. Ooh. This is the Ooh. Saturday night game. Bills are at home. They're minus seven and a half against the Dolphins. These are two division teams going at it. I think the Dolphins, they look like shit a little bit. The other night game against uh, Justin Herbert and uh, San Diego, whatever the fuck, L.A., whatever the fuck you call them now. But uh, I'm taking the Dolphins with the points, man. I know Jules probably likes the Bills. I mean, do I have to even comment? <laughs> <laughs> A revenge game. Yo, it's going to be fucking cold over Buffalo. Yeah, I yeah, I got to go build for Yo, like, talk, talk about it. Talk about, like, a, like, a, like this is why division games are dope, especially when it's these type of scenarios, because we don't really have this being in the NFC East. Because, look, Miami's all the way down in fucking sunny Florida, right? When they first met earlier in the season, they it was like 110 on the fucking Bill side. Yeah. Well, guess what? Now it's going to be like fucking 20. It's going to be like minus fucking 10 in fucking Buffalo. And like, yo, they were talking about like not even giving them heaters. Yeah, dude, like I'll tell you, Miami hasn't played as well as they were at one point in the season. You know, they are coming off of two losses. Granted, they were to the 49ers and on the road to the Chargers, but now they're on the road in Buffalo. Yeah, it's so tough. You know, West Coast. It's a tough, tough turnaround. But you Ooh, think like they get blown season. out? I don't like the seven and a half, but I, but it's tough to not take the Bills right now. Yeah. They just re-signed Cole Beasley. <laughs> I know I think that yeah. makes a difference. Um, yeah, okay, but I think I think the Dolphins definitely covered. But all right, Bills it is. Bills it is. All right, moving on. Uh, ooh, Chiefs. They're away. They're playing the Texans. Uh, Chiefs are minus fourteen. Let me tell you some guys. The Chiefs. They ain't the Cowboys. Where the Cowboys just fucking play down. The competition, they look, I mean, especially, and they don't have Dak Prescott, which that guy sucks. He threw two picks to the Houston Texans who have uh, two rookie corners or two, two corners that were out and a rookie safety. And he still throws two fucking picks. Dak Prescott is a fucking bum. I'm on the chiefs all day. I want to put that as my key bet before you guys even say anything. Okay. I mean, listen with, with the chiefs fucking still fighting for home field advantage. Yeah. They're going to put the pedal to the metal. Texans haven't shown me much. Chiefs going there, they smack them. There's no, I don't see that. I don't see why that would be a close game. Yeah. Chiefs, it is. All right, guys. Next game. Got to hate to say this. Cowboys, they're away. They're in Jacksonville. <coughs> Jacksonville is a weird fucking team, but every time the Cowboys come off like a kind of like an embarrassing game, they usually fucking win. I got to go with the Cowboys. I'm going Jaguars. I don't care what you say. <laughs> Jules, it's up to you. So like, like I guess if you all right, if you, if you go over the last month of the Cowboys, right, and you know they come in, they smack the Viking after so like kind of what you said. So we'll go back five weeks. They lose to the Packers in overtime, right, and then they come back and they demolish the Vikings. Then they play the Giants on Thanksgiving and they win by eight. Then they come back and demolish the Colts. Now they fucking they fucking they struggled against fucking the Texans and they normally the thing would be that they come in they smack Jaguars around. The only concern I have, and again, this is the only concern, and I'm trying to pull it up right now. And that's why I'm, I'm like causing a little bit more of a delay here, is what the weather's like. Because if the, the Cowboys got to go in and they're going into Jacksonville, it's going to be like sunny and 90 degrees. They're going to have a little bit of trouble. All right. If they go in there and it's one of those like off days or it's an overcast and it's like 75, 80, you know, or in the low 80s, something like that, they'll fucking smash Jacksonville. Don't they so, practice in Texas? It's pretty hot down there. Yeah, but they're, yeah. they're indoors, dude. So they get the oh, yeah, yeah. going and shit. Yeah, you know what I mean? yeah, right, right. Yeah, the big difference is we got to get outside. I, I don't know that it'll make that big of a difference. And the game time weather, according to ESPN, is 59 degrees. So it's going to be a fucking Cowboys it is. <laughs> Cowboys it is. All <laughs> right. Move, moving on. Uh, Panthers with Sam Darnold. Uh, Panthers are at home. They're minus two and a half against the Steelers. 
He played pretty Steel. good. I'll go first on this one, all right? And here's my thing. Of course, you're going to go, go first, Jules. I'm going to go first. I'm going to oh, go first, first on this one. All right, first on this one, all right? So, yo, what a the, the Panthers intern coach was basically throwing the organization under yes. the bus. Yeah, we can't tank games. They were a game out of first fucking place. Let me repeat. They were a game out of first fucking place. And here come the Steelers, who are just not the Steelers right now. I think I like the Panthers. Just going to say. Me too. Me too. I like Really? I like Wilkes. I like Carolina's coach. I like him, and they better fucking extend him. Otherwise, bring him on the Giants as somewhere. I don't oh, care. <laughs> like I, I like him, man. Yeah, they 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 fucking play hard for that motherfucker. I, I, yeah, I'm going Panthers too. John, you like the Panthers or Steelers? Uh Steelers actually. Wow. All right. Well, I'm going with the Panthers. Remember Panthers that. Winning two straight, just FYI. You know, they beat the Broncos yeah. and they won in Seattle. So just keep that in mind. They are Love those playing Panthers. a lot better football, and they have a shot at the division. So they have a lot more to play for at home than the Steelers. Panthers. Yeah, I just got a gut feeling. All right. All right. Well, next game, uh, Saints are at home. They're minus four against the Falcons. Uh, guys, remember Falcons? They're starting the rookie, uh, Riddler, and actually, um. What's his name? Marcus Mariota left the team because of it. <laughs> he, he just left. Fucked, he left. He just bounced. He's wow. like, what the fuck? You know, we're, we're, we're pretty much playing for the division almost, right? In that shitty yeah, they, they were game out as well. They were and game out as well. You're going to start the rookie now and just kind of give up on the season? That that won't sit, sit right with me if I'm a fan of that team. Uh, Saints all day. I think with that defense in, in New Orleans, that rookie's going to get fucking clobbered. Keep in mind, well, that's exactly what the Giants do with Eli Manning. Yeah, they did. Yeah, with Kurt Warner. Yeah. Or well, that was that was smart. But yeah. no, I, I can see where the Saints, the Saints, uh, they cover this one. I can see that. That when the Giants did it, it was smart though. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> Falcons are stupid. You know, until, until Ridley goes for like 350 <laughs> yards and three touchdowns this Sunday. But yeah. whatever. Right. He's running all over the goddamn place. He's fucking he's just get he's starting to kick field goals. He's pointing, there. throw bombs and shit. Yeah. Yeah. The fucking he's the spot around the kicker. Yo, and Chris Olave go off. Olave has like 10 for like 180 and shit. Yeah, no, I don't know. <laughs> He'll be the gunner on special teams. The guy does everything, Riddler. <laughs> um, all right. This is a weird spread. The next game, Jeff. Jets are at home against the Lions, and the spread on this website, and no joke, is fucking zero. <laughs> it's just a pick. Yeah, I got even money from my uh, from uh, uh, Caesars right now on ESPN. Oh, this is going to be uh, a game. I have to go Lions here because it would just disgust me for the the Jets to have more wins than the Giants after the way we started. Oh shit! I didn't even think of that. Um, I do. I I really don't. Lions are just playing ridiculous, man. This Lions. this game again. I'm money blowing this motherfucker, actually. You like the Lions, huh? You gonna override everything? I want to hear what Jules got to say about this, though. All right, well, even though I got overridden here, but like to me, it just sucks that we're picking this game at this point in the week, right? Because we don't know what Mike White's status is, and obviously they're not gonna go back to oh, Zach yeah. Wilson. That's already been said. So if Joe Flacco's in there, yeah, then the Lions are gonna fucking run all over the Jets. It won't be like that, though. I, I can still see. You know, like, you know, I can still see a little bit of struggling. I can see it turn into somewhat of an ugly sort of defensive game. Mm. But, yeah, I mean, if the Lions don't win that, I'd be shocked. Yeah. But now if Mike White comes in, I, I think the Jets could win that game. But we'll see. Mike White. Mike uh, White. crazy. He sounds racist. All right, next game. Eagles, they're away. They're in Chicago. And the Eagles are minus nine. I'm gonna say it. I because after no, the Eagles blew out the Giants, no. <laughs> I like the no, Bears. They usually teams, teams, teams usually foul. don't blow two foul. teams out. Remember, Dallas didn't blow two teams out two in a row. Uh, but but the the Eagles, they're probably gonna blow them out. Come on, dude. Like like why right. even why even pretend? Like y'all do it. All right, fine. They they only beat the Packers by seven. They barely beat the Colts. They <laughs> lost to the Commanders. But that's when they were like asking to get beat. And yeah, they came, right. They, you know they they beat the shit out of the Titans. They beat the shit out of us. There goes your back to back. So they already did it. What are you gonna go to fucking Chicago? Unless, unless there's some like fluke snowstorm that fucking comes out in the Midwest and, and, and fucks that game up, bro. Like, how the fuck do the Eagles not win, like win by a 10 spot? Come on. Really, dude? Yeah. They can't win 30 to 20. Come on. Yeah, if the if the Bears cover and then all of a sudden people be like, oh, Fields is better than Jones. Yeah, you're right. I'm, yeah, I'll go with the yeah. Eagles, man. Don't even do it to yourself. Just let them ride for right now. Yeah, they're, let, they're, let break break all the Eagles' hearts. 
in fucking in, in the playoffs. And then I could just be like, T L A A O F F S. You lost. I just I just hope they get hurt or some shit during that game. I think George just got playoffs wrong. Oh, uh, shit. All right. Next game. Uh, Patriots, they're away. They're minus one against the Raiders. Patriots coming off that big game on Monday night. Ooh, not it. This is an interesting game. All right. Because, you know, yeah, the Patriots, the Patriots actually have jumped over. They leapfrogged over the Jets, who at one point in time were like thinking they were going to be in first place in the NFC, uh, in the AFC East. Yeah. And, and I guess, are the Raiders still technically mathematically alive for the playoff spot? I don't know, but after that that most recent loss, that was bad. Yeah, that was bad. Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, that, that Thursday night game was pretty pretty trash. I mean, yeah, I got I got to go Patriots here. Like they they're actually in contention for the playoffs. It means so much to them, and they looked pretty yeah. decent on, on the other night on Monday night. John, you, you like Patriots? this one, Mike? Patriots. Okay. Yeah. yeah, I agree. All right, next game. Ooh, Broncos, they're at home. They're minus three. I don't know what's up with Russell Wilson. Uh, they're going against the Cardinals. Uh, Cardinals lost Kyler Murray to the ACL last night, which is fucking brutal. Um, Broncos, they do got one of the best defenses in the NFL. They're going against Cole McCoy. I got to go with the Broncos here. Oof, Cole McCoy against the Broncos. Oh, yeah. excuse me. Not the Seahawks. I, mean, I, I, was thinking, I was thinking Russell Wilson. That's what I meant to say, Russell Wilson. Are, uh, are we doing that just because the Broncos are the home team? Probably, yeah. <laughs> I mean, they have no defense. The Cardinals, they look like they look like garbage, man. Bro, like, but they're both shit teams. <laughs> I mean, come Somebody got to win. Well, how's Isaiah Simmons doing? Well, not not necessarily. He's doing pretty good, man. He's he fought, he led the league and uh, led the team in tackles last year. He's doing pretty good. He had some. He had a nice game yesterday. Dude, and he's I, the only one. They have nobody else on that fucking defense. Yo, I, I can see this game finishing in a tie. Yeah, that could happen. <laughs> that could definitely happen. I don't know. Who do you guys like? I, I like the Broncos. Oh. Yeah, I like Broncos too. Why? Let's ride. <laughs> I mean, I'm not going to override a 3 and 10 team, but like, why, bro? Let's ride, man. Let's ride. Fucking Bronco oh, County. Because the Cardinals. The Cardinals are which one call it? They they don't have they got one more win. <laughs> I mean, I, yeah, they had uh, they had one more win with Kyler Murray. They don't have they don't have the quarterback. Yeah, as much as he's a little fucking asshole, but he's, he's <laughs> he is better than Cole McCoy by a pretty good margin. He sure is. Oh boy! All right, next game. Um, ooh, Buccaneers are at home against the Bengals. Bengals are minus three and a half. Well, this is like if you, if you go with what we were saying about Carolina, right? Damn the man, it is. Come and bring the heat and knock it in and knock them out. The, the Panthers win, right? And all of a sudden, there's a tie for first place in the NFC South. <laughs> I know. I do bagels. degrees. Bagels are on fire, but listen, bagels are without right boy. And... Don't do it to yourself. Do not do it. Go. Just take the bagels. Do it to yourself. Just fucking yo. Stop thinking of who the hell the quarterback is for the Brown for the Bucks. And just think about Tampa the way they've been playing. All right, they yeah, can't. Like he, he can't hit a deep pass no more, dude. Like yo, like 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 yo. He has not had any deep passes. That's the difference between last year and this year, and that's the reason why their record is what it is. Like they're not that good. Yo, the Bengals are still fighting mathematically for the number one seed in the AFC. Yo, I gotta go with them all fucking day long. That's why I think it's gonna be interesting down the stretch. That's why I picked Carolina earlier. It's gonna be fun to watch that be for like the division between them. Yeah. And it's a shitty division. John, you like the Bengals or Tom Brady? Cincy. Cincy? All right, Cincy it is. Next game, Chargers. They're at home, coming off the big win against Miami on Sunday night. They're going against Tennessee. Chargers are minus three. Tennessee kind of fell off, huh? I mean, dude, this is crazy. Like, when you what think happened? about it, because the Titans at one point looked like they turned everything around and they were going to be, you know, fighting for that number one seed that I keep mentioning all throughout this whole thing. And... Now, all of a sudden, they're sitting at seven and six and so are the charges. This is a playoff game. This, this is, is literally a, a fucking playoff game right now. And you know what? I think Mike Williams is healthy. Keenan Allen's healthy. Josh Palmer's been playing great. Eckler's healthy. I think Herbert's better, better than he was. I got to go with the charges, bro, all day. My God tells me Titans here. You know, oh. Chargers have like one of the worst run defenses. So Titans do run the ball well. You know what, Jules? I'm going to go with the Titans, man. Oh. 
Yeah, I, I kind of like the Titans. All right, Woo. speaking speaking of playoff Woo. games, let's get you know, to our right, game. Now, now, just look before I finish, the Titans coming off with, they, they're going to win on the road in L.A., coming off a three-game losing streak to the Bengals, to the Eagles, and the Chargers. And they're going to turn it around and save the season and beat the fucking Chargers, who have been on fire, by the way. Uh, well, I can't say on fire, but they beat the Cardinals, they lost to the Raiders, and they beat the Dolphins. That's what we said. Uh, we said it. Just, just, just so you know where I'm at. We're on. Well, we'll, <laughs> we'll talk about that game next week. All right. Speaking of playoff games, uh, here it is, the Sunday night game. The Commanders, they're at home. The Commanders are minus four and a half against us. That's a joke. That's a fucking joke. This game is coming down to the wire, right? Yeah, I mean, bro, like, if you're going to tell me that a field goal doesn't decide this game, then what will, right? Yeah. I understand we, we got a little smoked against fucking the Eagles this past Sunday, but, like, yo, give me the fucking points all day. Give me the points all fucking day long. Because you cannot say that two weeks ago, we didn't lose that fucking game because we did, okay? We should have won that game. Should have never been a fucking tie. What We let Washington back in it and then kept them hanging fucking around. So now all of a sudden we go there and they're four and a half point spread, not even a fucking home three. Fuck you. Definitely like the, I like the Giants this week. I mean, do you want me to say anything? No, I mean, really? You know what it is. Yeah. Giants. All right, Giants it is. All right. Um, the last game, the Monday night game. Packers, they're at home. They're minus seven against the Rams. Uh, Packers, right? I mean, are we they're at home. Yeah, I got to go Packers too. Bro, let me tell you something. There's some, there's some interesting Rogers games this little, week. Little yeah. There's some interesting games this week. There's some real shit games this week. And That's there's some games one. that are going to determine playoffs. Looks like a fun week, but... Man, there's some games that like I would I wouldn't fucking bet this game if you gave me money to bet it, all right? <laughs> and this I is know. one of them for sure. Like, why would I bet this game? Why? Right. Like, how do they even come up with seven points? It makes no sense. But yeah, all right, we'll go with the fucking home team on that, I guess. Yep. All right. Well, Jules, you got to pick a key bet because I picked one, John picked one, and we agreed on one. Today we're <laughs> All right, I'll fucking I'll go down swinging with it on Saturday night. Give me the Buffalo Bills. <laughs> Buffalo <laughs> Bills, and there it is. There's are the picks. Uh, guys, you know who Chuck Knox is? Uh, I think I talked about him on, on here before. Chuck Knox, he makes the Giants type videos. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. So he put a tweet out. I just saw. <laughs> if you're having a bad day. Just remember that there are Giants fans out there right now that bought a Kenny Galladay jersey. <laughs> <laughs> I figured you appreciate that, Jules. Yeah, I, 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 I definitely did. <laughs> <laughs> I almost fucking blow one. All right, before Jules wraps this show up, I just want to shout out to the people that uh, hit our DMs up uh, that wants the shirts and the gear we're going to get. Um, we're going to order pretty soon. If these guys ever answer my text messages when I when I text them, so we'll get that going on pretty soon, and then I'll start chipping out those shirts. To you guys, we didn't forget you. Uh, thanks for listening. Thanks for the support. Appreciate you guys. Absolutely, definitely, definitely love the appreciation. Well, listen, Go Giants, Giants fans, here we are this far into the season. Giants actually have a winning record, except I think because of the way we've been playing down in the last so month or so of the season. Everyone feels like we should be fucking getting a number, another top ten pick, which is not what's going on currently. We could play a team that we literally just played two weeks ago and tied and had them on the ropes all fucking thing long. We come back on fucking next Tuesday with eight fucking wins. I cannot wait to see what Giants Twitter and every fucking other social media outlet has to say, because that's what I think is going to happen. Yes, I'm going to go on a record here. I'm going to fucking go out and say, I'm not going to come back and say with the usual, well, you know, I hope we come to eight wins. I hope we do that shit. No, the Giants are going to go in and beat fucking Washington on Sunday night football. You fucking heard it from me first. I'll fucking eat crow all day next week if I have to. But the Giants come out with the dub. Fuck that. We will see you guys next week. You motherfucking haters, come at us if you want, all right? Giants get the dub. Daniel Jones looks good. And we're going to be fucking with eight wins by the time we get this shit next week. That's all I got to say. I'm out. We'll see you guys later. The podcast is out. Peace. Go Giants.